Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Let's review the characteristics that distinguish imperfectly competitive industries from other market structures. Imperfectly competitive markets are dominated by a lesser number of larger firms that produce and sell differentiated products. Imperfectly competitive firms are price makers, which means that every firm in the industry has the ability to sell their goods at the highest price that consumers are willing and able to pay according to market demand. Because imperfect competitors sell differentiated products, the use of non-price competition is a necessity in the industry. The lack of competition in the market means that firms don't feel pressure to reduce waste during the production process, leading them to be productively inefficient in the long run. Imperfectly competitive industries also have high barriers to entry, which means that new firms will find it difficult to join the industry and compete with existing firms. This enables imperfectly competitive firms to maintain their control in the industry and earn economic profits in the long run. Now that we've covered these facts, let's move on and take a look at graphing an imperfectly competitive firm. Let's begin by graphing the per unit production cost curves for the firm. Here we can see the average variable cost, the average total cost, and the marginal cost for the firm at various levels of output. Because imperfectly competitive firms are larger in size, there can be some variation in their per unit production costs. The rate at which the curves rise or fall will vary depending on the firm's stage of returns. But the fundamental trends and patterns of the per unit cost curves will look the same for each imperfect competitor. Next, let's graph the demand curve for the firm. In imperfectly competitive markets, the law of demand is in effect. This means that the relationship between product price and the quantity of goods demanded by consumers is inverse, leading to a downward sloping demand curve for imperfectly competitive firms. Wait a minute, why are imperfect competitors subject to the law of demand while perfect competitors can sell any quantity at a set market price? Well, it's all about the number of firms in the industry. Remember that many small firms produce and sell identical products in a perfectly competitive market. With thousands of competitors in the industry, no one firm has a large market share of the total industry output. Any change in the output of a single firm will prove insignificant to market supply and the total quantity produced in the industry. As a result, perfectly competitive firms can easily sell as many units as they'd like at a singular market price resulting in a perfectly elastic, horizontal demand curve for the firm. By contrast, imperfectly competitive markets are dominated by a lesser number of larger firms, leading each firm to have a larger market share of the total industry output. As a result, imperfectly competitive firms are either the sole supplier or one of only a few suppliers of goods and services in the market. This means that any change in the output of the firm will alter market supply and the total quantity produced in the industry. As a result, the demand curve for the imperfectly competitive firm represents the demand curve for the industry itself. As such, the firm must set a lower market price in order to sell a greater quantity of output, resulting in a downward sloping demand curve for the firm. An imperfectly competitive firm's marginal revenue curve is less than its demand curve at every output level, except the first unit produced. Because imperfect competitors must lower product price per unit to sell greater quantities of output, the revenue gained from each additional unit sold will decrease faster than market price. Assume that this is the revenue data for an imperfectly competitive firm in the industry for good M. Here we can see the price per unit at each quantity demanded representing the demand curve for the firm. We can also see the total revenue for the firm at each level of output, and the marginal revenue of each additional unit of good M sold. 
as the firm reduces its product price and sells greater quantities of good M. Notice that the marginal revenue gained from each unit sold is less than the price of the product. When plotting the product price and marginal revenue earned when each additional unit is sold, you can see that the marginal revenue of each unit of good M is less than the price per unit at every quantity demanded. As a result, the firm's marginal revenue curve is below its demand curve, representing that demand and price is greater than marginal revenue for the imperfectly competitive firm. Like all other firms, imperfectly competitive firms will produce a profit-maximizing level of output using the optimal output rule. According to this rule, a firm will maximize its profit by producing a quantity of output where the marginal revenue of the last unit produced is equal to its marginal cost. On the graph, this optimal level of output can be found where the marginal revenue curve intercepts the marginal cost curve. This is known as the profit maximization point. However, this profit maximizing level of output will also help the firm to set the market price for its products. Remember that imperfectly competitive firms are price makers. Price making firms have the ability to sell their goods at the highest price that consumers are willing and able to pay, set entirely by market demand. But how does the imperfect competitor know what that price is? Easy. It's on the demand curve. Once the firm has identified its profit maximizing level of output, it simply needs to identify the price that consumers are willing and able to pay at that quantity along the demand curve. The firm will then sell all of its output at that price in the market. From here, we can use the graph to determine revenue, costs, profits, and losses for the imperfectly competitive firm. We must first identify the firm's profit maximization point. From here, we can determine the quantity of output that the firm will produce, as well as the market price that the firm will charge per unit, which is set entirely by the demand curve. We can then identify the firm's variable cost per unit, where the quantity line intercepts the AVC curve, and the total cost per unit, where the quantity line intercepts the ATC curve. From here, we can determine whether the firm is earning economic profit, taking economic losses, or breaking even. Remember, here are the rules. If the firm produces a quantity where the market price is above the ATC curve, then the firm is earning economic profits. If the firm produces a quantity where the market price is below the ATC curve, then the firm is taking economic losses. If the firm produces a quantity where the market price is equal to the ATC curve, then the firm is breaking even. Using the graph, we can also calculate the revenue, costs, profits, and losses for this imperfectly competitive firm. Let's assume that the firm will produce 500 units of good M, and the market price for good M is $5. The firm will earn $5 of revenue per unit of good M, and will earn a total revenue of $2,500, represented by the area shaded here. If the firm faces an average variable cost of $2 per unit, the firm will face a total variable cost of $1,000, represented by the area shaded here. And if the firm faces an average total cost of $3 per unit, the firm will face a total cost of $1,500, represented by the area shaded here. With $2,500 in total revenue, the firm will be able to pay the $1,500 in total production costs and still have a net revenue of $1,000. This net revenue represents $1,000 in economic profits for the firm. Changes in market demand can cause changes in output, revenue, and profits for an imperfectly competitive firm. For example, suppose that demand for good M increases, signaling that consumers are willing and able to pay higher prices for good M at every output level. This change in market demand will cause an increase in both the price per unit and the marginal revenue earned by each additional unit sold in the industry. This will be visualized with a rightward shift of the demand and marginal revenue curves. With a greater marginal revenue per unit, 
the firm will seek a new profit maximization point and increase the quantity of good M it produces until marginal revenue equals marginal cost, allowing the price-making firm to set a new market price along the demand curve at $7 per unit. Now that product price has risen to $7 and the firm has boosted its output to 600 units, the firm will increase its total revenue from $2,500 to $4,200, leading to greater economic profits for the firm. Likewise, if demand for good M decreases, the price per unit and the marginal revenue earned by each additional unit sold in the industry will decrease. This will be visualized with a leftward shift of the demand and marginal revenue curves. With a lesser marginal revenue per unit, the firm will seek a new profit maximization point and decrease the quantity of good M it produces until marginal revenue equals marginal cost, allowing the price-making firm to set a new market price along the demand curve at $3 per unit. Now that product price has fallen to $3 and the firm has reduced its output to 400 units, the firm will decrease its total revenue from $2,500 to $1,200, leading the firm's economic profits to turn into normal profit. Changes in the firm's production costs can also cause changes in output, revenue, and profits for an imperfectly competitive firm. For example, suppose that labor wages, a variable cost of production, decrease for the firm. As the average variable cost decreases at every output level, the marginal cost of producing each unit of good M falls as well. This will be visualized with a downward shift of the AVC, ATC, and MC curves. The firm now has an incentive to boost production at a new profit maximization point because a decreasing marginal cost per unit means the firm can produce more than it used to and still keep marginal revenue greater or equal to marginal cost. As a result, the quantity of output produced by the firm will increase, and the firm will set a lower market price at the demand curve. But the firm will earn greater total revenue and greater economic profits. On the other hand, suppose there is an increase in labor wages. As the average variable cost increases at every output level, the marginal cost of producing each unit of good M rises as well. This will be visualized with an upward shift of the AVC, ATC, and MC curves. The firm will have an incentive to reduce production at a new profit maximization point because an increasing marginal cost per unit means the firm must produce less than it used to in order to keep marginal revenue greater or equal to marginal cost. As a result, the quantity of output produced by the firm will decrease, and the firm will set a higher market price at the demand curve, leading the firm to earn less total revenue and fewer economic profits. Changes in fixed costs have a slightly different impact on imperfectly competitive firms. Because fixed costs must be paid regardless of output level, remember that they have no influence on the quantity that the firm produces. In addition, changes in fixed costs do not impact the variable cost nor the marginal cost of each unit of output. Instead, it will only change the total production cost per unit. For example, suppose that insurance fees, a fixed cost of production, decrease for the firm. The average total cost decreases at every output level, which will be visualized with a downward shift of the ATC curve. However, because fixed costs have no influence on average variable cost or marginal cost, the AVC and MC curves will not shift, and the firm's profit maximization point will remain the same. As a result, the quantity of output produced by the firm will not change, and the firm's total revenue will stay the same, but the firm will earn greater economic profits because total costs have fallen. On the other hand, Suppose that insurance fees increase for the firm. The average total cost increases at every output level, which will be visualized with an upward shift of the ATC curve. Again, because fixed costs have no influence on average variable cost or marginal cost, the AVC and MC curves will not shift, 
and the firm's profit maximization point will remain the same. As a result, the quantity of output produced by the firm will not change, and the firm's total revenue will stay the same. But the firm will earn fewer economic profits because total costs have risen. And that's graphing in perfectly competitive firms. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy my channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my micro minute video on comparing perfectly competitive and imperfectly competitive firms, or you can click here for my video on graphing perfectly competitive firms. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Love Economics.